Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and today you are joining me on a brand new episode of Design Hacks, design tricks to make your home look more expensive. If you're wondering what to do with the current conditions of your home, maybe you're looking to update some finishes, draw more attention to some architectural details that you've been meaning to highlight, or you simply want to get my top designer tricks on how to make your home look more luxurious and expensive, this video is for you. I recently had so much fun hightailing it to the mountains this past weekend with my best friends and all of our kids. My friends and I love to take these little mini staycations with our families. I mean, we bring the kids in tow and they just absolutely love it. It's such a great way to spend quality time with our loved ones, breathe in all of that fresh mountain air, and of course have all of the kids join us for a weekend of fun. Lake Arrowhead is less than two hours away from Orange County where I currently live and I love this area. If we wanted to ski or snowboard during the winter time, Big Bear Mountain is literally right there. During the summertime, the trails are really perfect for biking or hiking or even walking the dog. There's a really gorgeous lake where everyone jet skis, they sail. I mean, there's just so much to do in Lake Arrowhead. And of course, at the crux of it all, the real estate is insane. I mean, I spent this entire weekend looking for fixer uppers to renovate and invest in. I mean, that is how much I love this area. We stayed in this really incredible cottage style mansion that was right on the lake. I mean, it was so luxurious. It had its own trail leading down to its own private dock. It had its own dock house. The house itself is 5,600 square feet and it sits on almost half an acre of land. It boasts three different primary suites with its own ensuite bathroom. These primary suites are the size of small studios. I mean, it was so grand. And as I walked around the space, I started noticing so many design details that I really wanted to share with you. One of the first things I learned in interior design school was design is all about controlling what the viewer sees. So we are not talking about grand elaborate renovations or remodels. In this video, we are going to be dissecting those key designer details that helps elevate the look of your space. My number one designer tip for helping your home look more expensive is to highlight all of those architectural details. We all might not have these floor to ceiling windows, these gorgeous cathedral ceilings, open beams, and intricate woodwork in our homes. But not every single room in the home have these features. The one design detail that I did notice from room to room is that the homeowner really took advantage of all of the architectural features of the space. We've got sloped walls, slanted ceilings, drop ceilings, drop soffits, there was not one common room height from room to room. The kitchen itself was actually a lot smaller than the rest of the rooms in the space, but adding wood beams to an already low ceiling actually highlights the features of this kitchen and makes it more beautiful and cozy despite the low ceiling height. You'll notice that in one of the primary suites, the slope ceiling isn't even symmetrical. A feature like this is very common in so many different homes. You're going to get uneven walls, uneven windows. Maybe one window is lower than the other, one is higher than the other. But your job as a designer is to help trick the eye and control what the viewer sees. The viewer is not going to see that there's one extra wall, one extra side of the slope that's actually higher than the other side. What you're going to trick the viewer into seeing is this beautiful vaulted ceiling with with its open beam woodwork. You'll be mesmerized by the finished beam ceiling and this really beautiful crystal chandelier that further accentuates this feature. That transitions us into the next design trick to make your home look more expensive. It is making budget substitutions for luxury finishes. After this first tip, I know what you might be thinking. You do not have the budget to line every single ceiling with these expensive wood beams. But here's a little designer trick. A lot of these overhead beams aren't even made out of real wood. What if I told you that this was made out of foam? That's right, I'm talking about interior foam beams. You can find these foam beams on Amazon and even your local hardware store. The trick into making it look like an expensive architectural feature is how you finish it. If you want to fool the viewer into believing that it looks like wood, you have to paint it so that it has that type of wood distressing that is very prominent in these older type homes. If you love the look of natural stone, but you hate that luxury markup, try using porcelain instead. The primary bedroom suite that I stayed in had the most beautiful bathroom. I was really awestruck when I walked in because it felt like a really high-end hotel suite. 
The untrained eye can't see the difference between marble and porcelain that's made to look like marble. So if you're going for a very luxurious look in a bathroom or even a kitchen, try large scale porcelain tiles on for size. I love how the design of this bathroom had these porcelain tiles wrapped from the floor to the ceiling and all over the slope of this really beautiful bathroom. The height of the bathroom wasn't very tall at all. It was a typical eight feet, 96 inch, but it looked so much more grand and opulent because of the use of materials. They echoed that same porcelain for the countertops. And when you have a marriage of veined material against another veined material, all of a sudden the entire space is enveloped in this natural stone look and it looks just so much more elevated as a result. The flooring of the bathroom is a wood look porcelain plank. I get a lot of questions from viewers asking me what do I think of the wood tile porcelain look and in a space like this that is in the woods, you're on the lake, it has a very upscale cabin vibe. I love it, especially for a bathroom and especially when the transition goes from a hard wood to another wood style look. To me, it just really works in this space because there is no transition from the general flooring of the bathroom into the shower space. I love that the porcelain planks are so easy to work with because you can still cut a sloped drain right out of this tile. This type of slope drain would be very expensive if you're using one slab to cut your shower pan, except when you're using smaller pieces of tile, not only is it less expensive for labor, but it's also less expensive for materials. I love that the bathroom had a tub shower combo with these glass enclosures. There was also a frosted glass enclosure that was separating the water closet, which is really brilliant because if I'm in the shower and my husband's in the water closet, we still have privacy yet we're occupying the same space. Moving on to the kitchen. The perimeter countertops were porcelain as well and made to look like natural stone. So that is definitely a way for you to help elevate the look of the space while using a material that is affordable, it's easy to clean, it's easy to maintain, and it's non-porous. But another designer trick for you to use to help elevate the look of the space and make it look more expensive is to use the natural stone in the island. This gorgeous island was made out of a veined marble with a bluish undertone. And I love that the natural colors of the marble were really echoed in the view outside. Every single window of the home had a lake view and I love that the colors were really echoed in the space. It was such a brilliant way to highlight a natural material without spending a whole lot of money. If you don't have a really huge budget, but you love the look of natural stone, my advice would be to buy a really special slab. Put it somewhere where you know you're going to see it, and it's placed somewhere in the home where it doesn't require a whole lot of maintenance. You'll see that this marble wasn't next to the stove, it's not next to the working sink, but it's in the island. The island is typically somewhere where you just kind of set some food down, maybe it becomes like a makeshift buffet, especially if you're entertaining, and there's only a small little prep sink there. This material isn't gonna get as beat up as it would on the perimeter working countertop that's next to your working triangle. Let's talk about rooms with a view. You walk into this mansion and every single room had a view. You have trails, you have trees, you have foliage, you have three different levels to enjoy this 180 degree view of the lake. It was just so spectacular. Now, how do you lay out furniture and consider a focal point when there's just so much to see? I walked into the space and I knew immediately that this home was professionally designed. How do I know that? It's because these are the exact same designer tricks that I would implement in one of my clients' homes if I had this luxury view. The number one trick to keep in mind is to specify all low furniture. What does low furniture mean? Low furniture simply means furniture with a very low back. The back doesn't go higher than my shoulders when I'm sitting upright. The reason why you want to keep all of the furniture low is that you want to be able to see past the people sitting in the space to your spectacular view. Let's dissect the details of this living room. 
you have this spectacular view, which is the clear focal point, but what if you also have a fireplace and a television? A great rule of thumb is to place the television beside the fireplace on the same elevation. That means that it's sitting on the same wall. The TV is placed beside it so that you can flank the largest sofa or the largest seating group across from these two focal points, and you'll also have a very clear eye line of the beautiful view beyond it. Remember that the television should be placed next to the fireplace, not above the fireplace mantle, because that angle doesn't allow for ergonomic viewing of the television, especially for extended periods of time. You want to be able to create a clear passage around the perimeter of the seating group so that you could walk up to the window and enjoy the beautiful view. In a typical design, that passage would be a 36 inch minimum. But of course, if this were your own home and you wanted to maximize the seating group and not that clearance for passage, you could probably get away with a minimum 30 inches. I want to remind you that I'm here to provide all of my designer tips and tricks. I'll give you the rules, I'll give you all of the measurements, but ultimately it's up to you on how you lay out your space that best suits your family and your function and your needs. I also loved how this design included really functional swivel chairs in the living room as well. The swivel chairs allow you to view the television, the fireplace, the view, and you can even turn around and interact with people that are sitting at the bar. I love a piece of furniture that is just as stylish as it is functional. Moving on to my next designer trick for making your home look more expensive is to maximize your furniture layout. Maximizing your furniture layout doesn't mean pushing all of your furniture against the walls and calling it a day. How are you supposed to enjoy the company of others when there isn't a functional seating group for you to have a conversation? At the heart of this home was a really gorgeous family room. The family room had double height ceilings, a massive stone fireplace, these gorgeous vaulted beams, a floor to ceiling windows. I mean, it was really spectacular. But the previous design only had two symmetrical sofas facing each other and these dinky little armchairs that were just in the corner and it wasn't taking full advantage of the view. To maximize a furniture layout, you first need to understand the spatial requirements that you have to work with. My number one rule when embarking on any type of design is to measure the space. Once you measure the space, you might find that you could still flank a sofa facing a pair of armchairs while still enjoying the fireplace, all the while adding in a long formal dining table that could seat another 20 people in the space. Isn't that what these vacation homes are made of? It was just so spectacular to not only be able to seat more people in the space, it was just a genius way to maximize the use of space. There's also a little breakfast nook right off the kitchen and it's just a smaller square area. The previous design had this dinky little rectangular table that didn't even maximize the view of the space. You remember my rule when it comes to dining rooms and the shape of your dining table. A round or a square table would be best for that room. If you have a space that's longer than it is wide, that's when a rectangular table or an oval table would look best. So the rectangular table in the previous design was just all wrong for this room. They swapped that out with an eight top round table and it was just a brilliant move. It feels more luxurious, it feels more high end, and everyone seated at that table would have not only a really beautiful view of what's happening outside the house, but they had one just as spectacular looking in. One look at this spectacular cottage and you are just a hit with so much wood. I mean, you've got wood ceilings, you've got wood floors, you have wood finishes, wood beams, wood cabinets. It's just a whole lot of wood. How do you update mixed wood finishes to make it look modern, timeless, and not overdone? The answer is really simple. My advice is to tone down the color of really dated woods as much as you can. The previous design had so much honey oak that it felt like you're trapped in an old 80s movie. I love that the new design refinished the look so it made it feel a little bit more distressed, a little bit more lived in, more antique while still making it feel really fresh and current. But you can't just stop at restaining or refinishing wood. You also have to paint all of the interior walls in a color that would help highlight that feature and not detract away from it. Now that the distressed wood beams have a little bit more of a grayish undertone in them, finding a really beautiful wall color that would match that elevated vibe is my next designer trick. 
I have a really great video on best paint colors to match with existing wood finishes. If you're trying to tone down a color, help amp it up. I have a lot of honey oak examples in there. And my word of advice to you is if you don't love that honey oak color, invest in hiring a professional painter or refinisher that will help update it for you. Or you can look at numerous videos on how to do it yourself. In the previous design, this home office was clad in wood on every single surface. You had wood on all four walls, you had wood furniture, and it was also capped off with a wood ceiling. In the new design, you can see that the wood paneling on the walls were refinished in more of a grayish undertone. And they simply painted the entire ceiling in one coat of white paint. This allows all of the wall paneling to shine and it didn't remove any of the beautiful texture from the ceiling, but it just masked it in a really clean modern finish. And last on this list of designer tricks to make your home look more expensive is to tone down your theme. I get it, it's a lake house, it's in the woods, it has a cabin vibe. But that doesn't mean you need to paint the entire home in blues and greens, add nautical stripes, a couple of strategic antlers and call it a day. There are so many more creative ways to rethink a theme that makes it feel modern, fresh, and inviting. I love how in the kitchen, there was a singular antler pendant mixed in with a more modern matte black and brass metal pendant. The result is really fresh, it's really informal, and it still feels like an elevated cabin. Instead of bearskin rugs and fur pillows everywhere, you really can just add one strategic graphic antler pillow and call it a day. I love how the lakeside theme is echoed in the home decor in this space. You know that I'm not a fan of ceiling fans, but I really love the genius move that designer made for the pendant lights and the ceiling fans in this home. Each fan blade was made to look like a sail, and that felt so light, so airy, and really effortless in the bedrooms. Instead of throwing rope detailing everywhere, I loved how the design was really fresh and focused on decorative mirrors with some of this rope detailing instead. Once you mix in theme decor with something a little bit more modern or a little bit more industrial, all of a sudden it feels very current and not so conceptual. That's it for today's video of design hacks, designer tricks on how to make your home look more expensive. What did you think of today's list? We really scored on this fabulous rental in Lake Arrowhead. If you're ever in the area, I highly recommend this spot. I'll link it for you in the description box below. The adults and kids alike had so much fun. Even though there wasn't any snow at this time of year, we spent the entire weekend fireside. It was just so spectacular to be able to take in that crisp mountain air, that fabulous lake view, all the while spending quality time with all of our loved ones before the holiday frenzy. What did you think of today's list? I felt like I really scored with all of the before pictures of this fabulous mansion before it was updated and modernized to become a luxurious rental. The goal of this channel is to show you all of the amazing potential that you have with your existing space, no matter what your conditions, budget, or style. You'll see that the style before was just very traditional, very dated. It doesn't mean that it's not livable or beautiful or functional, but there are so many cosmetic changes you can make and make it feel so much more luxurious and expensive as a result. If you like this type of content, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know what was your favorite design detail of this fabulous rental. Aside from the view, I really loved the attention to designer details that made it feel like a luxurious resort escape. Share this video with anyone you know who's interested in interior design, and of course subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we roll out every single Tuesday. Happy holidays everyone, I'll see you next week.